Hello, I'm Ted Cavage, and welcome to My Perfect Read, brought to you by your Fairfax County Public Library. Have you ever walked into a branch and thought, I'd love to pick out a new book, but there are so many, I don't even know where to start? Well, we're here and happy to help. My Perfect Read is our new personalized online service where you can meet our library staff and also check out their recommendations for books and authors that they love and think you'll enjoy too. In today's show, we'd like to share with you a few adult books that we think should be on your reading list this summer. I have with me Laurel Takama from Thomas Jefferson Library, James Cullen from Sherwood Regional Library, and Nora Wickert from Dolly Madison Library. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Laurel, we'll start with you. Can you share with us one of the titles you've brought with you today? Sure. I'm going to start with a Dave Barry book Ooh. that I thought would be appropriate for summer. So it's a little breezier, a little funnier. He's uh, really funny. He is, yeah. You'll have a good chuckle while mm. reading this a couple. Uh, and it's called Best State Ever, A Florida Man Defends His Homeland. And if you are familiar with the concept of Florida man, it's uh, common to see in the newspaper, <laughs> hashtag Florida man right, does right. something crazy and extreme. Right, right. Uh, and he goes into a little bit of detail about the history of Florida, why it is the way it is, why it's a little quirkier. And he gets to go around to all different these different places that are very unique to what make Florida quirky. Yeah. Uh, they have their own version of Bigfoot and he talks to people who believe in it and, uh, <laughs> and are committed to trying to find this Bigfoot man. Yeah. And he goes to an atomic, uh, show, uh, animatronic show before Disney really became big. It was the big thing to go and see and still in production <laughs> about the same as it was back in the 50s. Uh, he also goes to an aquarium where there are mermaids uh, show doing a show oh with an American flag that comes out in the <laughs> oh middle of gosh. it. So it's very fun to uh, to follow him on his journey and talking to the people of the oh. that are native Floridians, mm -hmm. uh, and he writes everything with moldomatics, which are those old machines where you'd put in some quarters and it would oh, mold yeah. this yeah. kind of not that attractive little thing to give you <laughs> as a souvenir. <laughs> right. So fun, oh. light, and yeah. enjoyable. And when you think summer, you think Florida. So there exactly. you go. Exactly. Beach wonderful. weather. <laughs> Beach time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> James, what's on your list for adults to check out? Uh, we have How to Stop Time by Matt Haig, and this is a book where there is a gentleman named Tom Hazard, and he is searching for someone, like you get in many books. Uh, the kind of difference here is that he has a condition, a medical condition, which he ages much more slowly than normal humans, and he was born in the 1500s, but is still alive today. Wow. Um, so because of that, he's been with all kinds of different historical figures, including mm -hmm. working with Shakespeare at some mm -hmm. point in mm -hmm. his life. Um, it takes place both in a modern fiction and the historical fiction, um, and you're just kind of going along the ride and trying to see what he is searching for. Are some of those historical figures characters in the book? Are they, they portrayed? Are. Oh, yes. that's fun. Um, Captain Cook, Shakespeare, <laughs> and uh, plenty of others also. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. Nora, what about you? I have a book that's a little bit on the dark side. Um, it's called I Am Forbidden by Anouk Markovitz. It's a story of four generations of Satmars, which are a Hasidic Jew sect. Mm -hmm. It starts out in pre-World War II Transylvania. Ooh. So one of the characters, Joseph, who was five at the time, sees his family murdered, and their maid, um, who is a Gentile, takes him in and raises him as her own. Mm. Five years later, Joseph saves another girl, Myla, mm -hmm. who's all, whose family was also um, killed in front of her. Mm -hmm. And he brings her to a Satmar family. Um, Zalman Stern is the leader of the family. And Zalman raises Myla as his daughter, along with his own daughter, Atara, okay. and moves the, moves the family to um, Paris, and then ultimately to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, Myla becomes very devout, and her sister, Atara, finds the New York Public Library and really questions the fundamentalism. Oh, wow. And Myla also marries into the faith, and she marries Joseph, the boy who had saved her. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> and so um, the sisters, of course, are apart because mm -hmm. of the, the rules um, of the Hasidics. And 
and they get together at the end because there's a deep, deep, dark secret that threatens of to course. destroy them all. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. we all love a book where the library is a featured sort of yeah. part of the book, right? Yeah, so absolutely. Makes us feel and the so author good. herself was a member of the Hasidic Jewish community, and so it's historically and culturally she has accurate. Good, good experience right. from which to write this. Right. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Laurel, do you have another book to share with us? I do. All I right. have actually a young adult book, but I think it has crossover appeal for adults as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's called The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. And it's set in a small town, a very rural Tennessee town, with uh, these three outcasts who are friends with each other. Last year of high school, they're about to either go, the, one goes on to college or is planning mm -hmm. to go on to college, mm -hmm. and the other two are still kind of trying to figure out what to do. Um, the one, the girl is online famous as a fashion blogger. She's got all these connections with, like, she went to the New York uh, fashion show and has, like, high society connections, so she's got a very bright future. Yeah. But her two friends have much sadder stories. Um, the Serpent King refers to the boy whose father is in, was a, a preacher and was one of the serpent handlers, one of those mm. uh, Pentecostal, very kind of yes. fundamentalist churches. Uh, but he was caught having uh, inappropriate material on his computer, sent to jail. Oh. And so he's kind of living with that and the, the history that his family has uh, on him. And his mom doesn't want him to go away to college because she's the only one bringing in money really for the family. And he's mm. kind of tormented about what to do. And then they have another friend who's very big into kind of a nerd into this sci-fi <laughs> book series. I, I related the most to him. <laughs> but he has like a staff that he'll like take with him and he loves this high fantasy series and um, a very sweet, gentle giant type but has yeah. an abusive father. And so the it's very, if you like John Green, if you read mm. um, any of his books sure. or like The Fault in Our Stars, right. I think you would really like this too. It's surprisingly emotional, I would say. Yeah. Um, but highly There's so many young adult uh, novelists that have appeal to adults just as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Check out The Serpent King. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> James, do you have another book to share with us? Yes, I have here The Last Policeman by Ben H. Winters. Okay. And in this book, there is a detective, Hank Pallas. So it's a detective novel. We're okay. all familiar with those. Yes. It's a little different, though, that there's an asteroid coming to make contact with Earth in approximately six months. What? Yeah. So <laughs> there's a little bit of... Well, that changes things. <laughs> is it worth solving these crimes when probably the world's not going to be around much longer anyway? Um, what I liked about this is we read a lot of detective novels where mm. they're brilliant and they can just solve any crime, right. um, like Sherlock. Sherlock Holmes, yeah. um, with this one, he's just been promoted to detective. So he's really new, and you, he, yeah. you, you, know, you kind of discover things with him, okay. um, all while that asteroid is headed towards us. Oh, my. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with that said, it's not like a sci-fi experience. It's you know, right. modern, regular fiction. Just it's, it's out there. It's more about these characters and, right. and what's happening for them right there. But this asteroid is looming, which is a really interesting touch. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nora, do you have another title I to do. share? I do, and this book, If You Love to Laugh, <laughs> Fool by Christopher and Moore. I love Christopher Moore, he's amazing. I love Christopher Moore. I recommend everybody, to, everybody has ever read this has come back and said it was the funniest book they've ever he's read. so funny. So I've, I like laughed out loud, <laughs> literally. Um, and this book comes with a warning, which <laughs> I'm gonna read because it oh, no. kind of sums up the book. It says, this is a body tale. Herein you will find gratuitous shagging, murder, <laughs> spanking, maiming, treason, <laughs> and theretofore unexplained heights of vulgarity and profanity, as well as non-traditional grammar, split infinitives, and the odd wank. So it's so typical Christopher Moore book, basically. <laughs> right. So, um, so it does give the warning. It says, if that's the sort of thing that you might enjoy, then you've happened upon the perfect story. <laughs> so the premise of this is Shakespeare's King Lear. Okay. Um, he also brings in other characters and quotes from other Shakespeare mm -hmm. plays, in particular the Three Witches from Macbeth. <laughs> okay. So it follows. It's told by the perspective of the, the king's jester, Pocket. Okay. And it is just so funny. You will just, your stomach will hurt laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds amazing. Thank you. 
My reading list is growing as we speak. <laughs> Laurel, do you have another book to share I with us? I do have another Good. one. This one is called Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mercado. Mm -hmm. And I uh, recommend this one because it's a bunch of short stories that are very, um, very literary in nature where I will only read one at a time because then I stop and like think have to think about what I read and mm -hmm. what the meaning of it was and what she's saying but it's uh, genre crossing so there's it's like blending uh, science fiction with um, just the tales of the uh, the protagonists um, doing other things so it's right. bending uh, different categories of, of literature mm -hmm. um, but very provocative very thought-provoking mm -hmm. um, I was especially after mm. the first one which uh, a story called the husband stitch I wanted to like get a book club together just to talk about just like, for the one what story? Is this is yeah yeah oh like let's dig into this a so lot of, a lot of substance there. yeah That's yeah great. but it's good to kind of read over a period of time like I said yeah. read one um, and then to kind of take a break, maybe go read more, <laughs> some Christopher Moore, <laughs> and then come back. <laughs> and part of the appeal of the short stories is you can read one fairly quickly. You could sort of sit down, read a story, and, uh, and then write, then stop and think about it for a while before you go back to your book. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat. Thank you. Great, thanks. Okay. James, have you got another one for us? I do have one more. It's a slightly older book. It's called Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Four, uh, who is a journalist. And... <clears throat> It really has nothing to do with Einstein, despite the name of the book. The cover is very interesting. Yes. You have a, a, yeah. the back part of a dinosaur, and very interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> what it is is he discovered um, there is kind of memory athletes who compete in being able to remember different things, and he wrote a story um, about it, and then expanded it into a book where not only does he talk about the history of memory and remembering things, but also um, he decides to enter in the championship that's coming up to try to remember a deck of cards. So that they flip over all the cards in the deck very quickly and then recite them to you. And the way they manage to do this is with a technique called the memory palace, where you assign everyday things to a person and uh, uh, like a verb. So moonwalking with Einstein. So he's remembering that the ace of clubs is Einstein okay. moonwalking, and wow. he's in a particular place in this memory palace, which is kind of like a, a thought of a mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. house or okay. building that you've been in. Wow. Um, so it's kind of a mix of things, um, yeah. but it's it's pretty interesting and yeah. uh, recommended to a lot of Sounds people. Sounds fun and, yeah, uh, different. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you. We have time for one more. Nora, All do you right. have a book to share? So my next one is a biography. It's A Thousand Naked Strangers, A Paramedic's Wild Ride to the Edge and Back. Oh, my. By uh, Kevin Hazard. <laughs> okay. So Kevin was a journalist, and 9-11 happened, and he started questioning his life and what was he doing and mm. decided that he would become an EMT. Okay. So after what was... I thought a really short amount of training, he becomes an EMT in Atlanta. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, at, like at first, he's really nervous about everything and freaked out by everything. But as it goes on, and it's it's very graphic in the mm -hmm. accidents and the mm -hmm. like, the crack houses that they go to. Wow. Um, he gets more comfortable with it, and it makes you realize what our EMTs and paramedics go through mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Um, so. It made me look into Fairfax County Fire and Rescue, yes. and I have to say they do much more training. <laughs> I was going to say, does, does he talk about the training? Does he, does he mention the training wasn't adequate in the book, or he, you just he get thought the... the training was not adequate? Okay. And there's a difference like, between wow. an EMT and a paramedic. So a paramedic okay. has more training, and uh, so. But it was just a fascinating look into the life of EMTs and paramedics. Wow. Well, thank you so much. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us on this edition of My Perfect Read. If you're interested in learning more about our books, programs, and resources for everyone, make sure to visit your nearest Fairfax County Public Library or check out My Perfect Read online at research.fairfaxcounty.gov slash myperfectread. See you next time.